Good day everyone, my name is Mahalan and welcome back to our channel. In today's video, I am on my way to the first ever permanent prison built in South Australia. The name of this prison is called as Adelaide Jail and it is located in the parklands of Adelaide. The jail is one of the two oldest buildings still standing in South Australia. It was built in 1841 and was operated from 1841 until 1988. During 147 years of operation, 300,000 prisoners were housed here and 45 were executed in this jail. Also, the interesting fact is the bodies of the prisoners hanged in this jail were buried within its walls. There are a lot of interesting and mysterious things about this jail and we are going to watch everything in this video. Before going into this video, I would like to ask you guys to consider subscribing to our channel if you haven't done so. And without further delay, let's go to the jail. This road is called as Port Road. This is one of the important roads in Adelaide, South Australia. And I am at the junction where Port Road and Jail Road meet. You can see the name board of the Adelaide Jail here. And we still need to walk another 300 meter in that direction. Let's go now. Alright, this is the entrance guys. You can see few information boards and banners are hanging here. There are also ghost tools being operated in this Adelaide jail and if it is possible we are going to do that one as well. This is the old entrance of this HM Jail Adelaide. You can see an Australian flag and an indigenous flag are hoisted on either side of the entrance. Now let's go inside guys. There is a reception and a small gift shop here and when you go past that, that is the entrance we need to go. I reckon our tour starts from here. Alright guys, I got a map of this jail. I'm right here at this place. I'm going to go straight and we are going to all the places in this map one by one. At the entrance, in this glass box, you can see few weapons and tools which were made by the prisoners during their time in this jail. As you see here guys, I think you all know this place. This is the visiting chamber of this jail. This is the place where prisoners meet and talk to the visitors and the outsiders. The number four place in this map is the medical center of this jail. Let's go inside this medical center and see what are available here. 
This is where all the prisoners were treated back in the days and you can see a doll in the shape of a doctor in that doctor's room. Prisoners who got injured in the internal fights and who medically needed attention were treated in this medical center and this place is now open for public. This is a dentist chamber often called as the torture chamber. It is because the prisoners were not given the toothbrushes and the paste and their teeth were affected so badly. It is also mentioned sometimes Dr. Blum who worked at that period would see up to 17 prisoners in one morning. Alright guys, the next place we are going now is mentioned as two yard in this map. This is the entrance to the yard number two. Let's go inside now. Wow, a very old building guys. Elizabeth Lillian Woolcock was the only female executed in South Australia. She was arrested because she poisoned her husband and kept here before her execution. When you look inside through this opening, you can see a big doll of Elizabeth Woolcock. The next place is a bathroom used by the prisoners at that time guys. Here you can see a room of a prisoner. Back in the days, prisoners were given few facilities and some furniture for their room. You can see them now. This is how a prisoner room was looking at that time. And also when you look at the wall, you can see a prison graffiti. Here is another building which is called as 1849 cell block. This was the first jail building with back-to-back -back cells opening into adjoining yards. Now let's go inside this building and have a look. Jail secrets unearthed. There are a lot of places dug in this prison and many things were discovered. This place is one of the places where a few things were discovered during unearthing. In this glass display here, you can see few things discovered during unearthing of this place. The next place we are going now is yard number 3. Let's go guys. You can see the beautiful flower plants at the entrance of this yard guys. Beautiful place at the entrance. Rose Garden. It is said that this garden was started in the 1930s by a female prisoner who was staying here.
this building here is called as sentence clothing store and this is where all the laundry activities were taken place when this prison was operating This is the place guys, you can still see few clothes are hanging there, I reckon the access to get inside is denied. When you come this side, you can see some toilets and bathrooms which were used by the prisoners back in the days. Look at here, this is a waste disposal unit. Prisoners usually spend around 18 hours in their prison cell and all their wastages are collected in a bucket given to them and disposed here in this unit every morning. This place in this jail is called as activity room. Prisoners here were allowed to participate in creative works and mainly they did crafting, sculpturing, painting and other kind of works. Some of their handworks are displayed here in these display cupboards. There were also facilities like kitchen and classroom available in this jail for women when it was operating. Let's go and have a look. This one here is a female officer's uniform used at that time. When you look at this side, you can see few kitchen utensils which were used at that time. Also, on the wall, you can see some photos of the prisoners who spend their time here. Women's Rehabilitation Center was another organization here and they conducted activities like sewing, handcrafting and artworks to rehabilitate the women spending time in this prison. There is also another compound on this side guys. You can notice this building is a very old building with a lot of damages. The doors of these cells are having a small opening on the top to talk and give food to the prisoners and most part of the door and lock are rusted very badly. Usually, every prison has a library to help the prisoners to spend their time usefully and improve their knowledge. This prison also had a library in this yard tree and it was running by a prisoner under supervision. It is also said there were thousand books in this library. You can see this place is still tidy and having few books and magazines. There was an observation tower in the middle of this prison from where the premises and the prisoners were observed. You are looking at the observation tower now and you can also see a cute bunny structure standing inside like an officer. Alright guys, the next place we are going now is yard number 4. Let's go there and see what were available in that compound. At the entrance, you can see a telephone booth. 
It was installed in 1980 and was used by the prisoners to talk to the outsiders under supervision. There are few more information about this cell block present here. And when you see this side, you can see the canteen of this prison. Prisoners were allowed to buy food and other items from this canteen using their money they earned by working in this jail. There is a statue of a canteen worker inside and you can also see some food items and other things kept inside for display. There is also a price list of food items and things sold in this canteen back in the days guys. It would be great if we can still afford these goods for the prices mentioned here. Now let's go inside this next place. In this place the tools and weapons used by the prison officers are displayed here. You can see an old emblem of this prison here and following that you can see few drawings of this jail. You can also see a photo of John Thomas Orwell who was the fourth governor of this jail. On this side you can see some blueprints of this jail. Following them, you can see some tools and instruments which were used to arrest and punish prisoners are displayed on this side. You can see a photo of few workers here and photos of some of the places in this jail after that. And following those photos, you can see a uniform and few badges of a prison worker who worked here. In this display, there is a register and few books used in this jail and also some badges used by the officers worked in this jail are displayed here. There are also few other photos, some tools like telephone, binoculars and etc are shown here. This yard number 4 is the biggest yard among all the yards here and there is a volleyball court in this yard in which the prisoners were allowed to play volleyball during their time here. This is how a room in this foyard looks like. You can see a statue of a prisoner and some facilities he could use while he was staying in this jail. There is an interesting story of a prisoner who tried to escape from this jail in 1982. A prisoner started digging to escape but his inmate informed the officers about his plan and he got caught. Because of that, he got his jail time extended and more punishment for attempting to escape and for damaging the jail property. You can find more information about that escape attempt in this board here. This is the cell where the prisoner who tried to escape stayed. Another escape attempt. Brian William was in this jail and he was another prisoner who tried to escape from this jail. You can find more information about his escape attempt on that board. In 2018, Brian revisited this jail as a visitor and took a photo in front of the cell he was staying. You can see that photo hanging there. Alright guys, the next place we are visiting now is yard number 5 and 6. It is said here that the prisoners who brought here on remand were also prisoned in yard number 5 and 6. Let's go inside this place and see.
you can see some old paintings on the top of these walls most of these paintings were drawn when this yard was built and most of the paintings now are faded and damaged here you can see each column is having a painting on the top in this room there is a 3d model of this jail displayed you guys can get a rough idea of how this jail looks like there is also a ship structure displayed in this room on the other side. Plaster chest set. Here you guys can see a chest chamber. It is said that the prisoners who behaved nicely during their days were allowed to play chess and other games in this room under supervision. This jail also had a praying chamber when it was operating. Prisoners who wanted to pray were allowed here to do their worship and you guys can see a Bible, Holy Cross and a piano which were used for praying and worshipping the God. Let's see what were the illegal activities happened in this jail. As we watched in movies, you guys can see the prisoners here hid knife and other small weapons inside the books and they used that to attack on others. You can also see some telecommunication devices and other modes of communication used between the prisoners. Here it is mentioned that some prisoners here used contrabands which are known as illegal weapons. These weapons and tools were collected and few of them are displayed here inside these drawers. In this first drawer, you can see few kinds of knives used by the prisoners. Inside the second one, you can see other kind of weapons and tools used by them. Inside the third drawer, you can see the tools which were used to intake drugs are displayed here. Also inside the last drawer here, you can see some prohibited weapons which were made from pen, pencil, home and other easily available items. During the jail days, some prisoners had the fun of getting tattoos. To get tattoos on your body, there were no machines or equipment available at that time but some prisoners made on their own and tattooed themselves. You guys can see some of them displayed here. In here, you guys can see the details about the hanging executions happened in this jail. All the hangings were occurred at 8 o'clock in the morning. The prisoner was taken for a medical checkup first, then to the hanging tower. His face was covered by face mask and legs were tied closely together. Hangman executed the hangings sharp on time after the signal from the chief officer at that time. After hanging, the dead bodies were taken and buried inside this jail in the allocated place. Then the name and the initials of the prisoner and the date executed were marked on the place where the dead body was buried. Here you guys can see the rope and the face cover used to hang the prisoners when this prison was operating. Birchings. Birching was another form of punishment given to the prisoners who stayed in this jail and involved in illegal activities. Birching means hitting hard on the prisoners but with a special type of stick which can hurt more. I reckon this kind of punishment is still available in the countries like Singapore, Malaysia and Indonesia. Corporal punishment. Here there are more information given about another corporal punishment which is known as whipping. Prisoners who deserved this kind of punishment were tied to a frame and hit hard with a whip. You guys can see a wooden frame here which was used to tie the prisoners and punish them with a whip. There are some interest escape stories available in this board. The first one says two men tried to escape through the window using their blankets but unfortunately they were get caught and put into jail again separately with more period. 
The next story says about few prisoners escaped from yard 5 to yard 4, but they will also get caught after few days of their escape. On the other side, you guys can see some paintings which were drawn by the prisoners when they were counting their days in this prison. Take the challenge. This place is for some challenge guys. There are different kind of locks given here and you can see some keys and steel wires available here. You can play around and try to open any lock using the keys and steel wires. Alright, now we are moving into the section where the remanded prisoners were kept. In this section, there are cells on both sides facing each other. Let's see inside one of these cells. This is how a cell looks like. You guys can see inside of a cell and things available for a prisoner who stays here. On the upstairs, you can see few more cells which were used to keep the remanded prisoners. Alright guys, now we finished the yard number 5 and 6. We are now going to the outside and look around this jail. In the external pathway, we can also visit the new and old hanging towers which were used to hang prisoners in this jail. Let's go and see them now. This is the outside yard going around the prison and you guys can see a watchtower in the corner right there. This is the inside of the watchtower guys. It's a tall building and I don't see any ways to climb up this building. Not sure how they were using this one when this jail was operating. In this jail, all the yards are on this side. And even the prisoners came out of the internal yards, they still got this yard going around the jail. And a very high perimeter wall going around this jail with tall watchtowers at each corner. I would say this is how a typical prison looks like and highly protected place where prisoners cannot escape easily. Alright guys, we are going to the next place which is right opposite to us. The place is called as Hanging Tower and you can find few information about the Hanging Tower right in this board here. Let's go inside this hanging tower and see how it looks like. This is the inside of the hanging tower guys. Hanging Tower. It is said that the last four men executed in South Australia were hanged in this tower between 1953 and 1964. There are two rooms in this hanging tower. Look at this room. It is having a small table and two stools. I reckon this should be the room where the final medical checkup and other document clearance would have been done for the executing prisoner.
inside the other room you guys can see nothing other than the lever which was used to execute the hanging on the outside you can see the stage where the hangings were taken place you can also see a hook on the top where the rope is hanged on the bottom you guys can see a wooden platform which opens when the execution happens on this side you guys can see the opening to get under the hanging platform once the hanging was done and the prisoner died his dead body will be taken through this opening Adelaide Jail Cemetery. As I said before, there were 45 prisoners hanged in this prison and their dead bodies were buried in this prison. On the back side of the map they given to us, the names of all 45 prisoners are given with the numbers and we can see where they are buried. Look at the first person. He is number 21. His name is Percival William Budd and he was executed for killing a person who stole his car. Look at this wall here. He is buried inside this wall. You can see his number denoted there along with his initials PWB and the date he was hanged also denoted there. He was hanged on 24th of April 1919. Following William Budd, you can also see the details of initials, numbers and dates of other dead bodies which were buried inside this wall. All the 45 dead bodies were buried in a line inside this thick, long perimeter wall of this jail. Coming past that place, you guys can see this portable gallows. This was the portable hanging tower used at the start of this prison and 41 people were hanged using this gallows. After that, the hanging tower we visited previously was used to hang the prisoners. Alright guys, that's the end of the tour around this first permanent and mysterious prison Adelaide Jail. I hope you guys would have enjoyed this video and if you did so, leave a thumbs up on this video. Please consider subscribing to our channel and hit the bell icon to watch videos like this. And I will see you all in another beautiful episode. Till then, thanks for watching and cheers.